Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Could a single prescription decide the health of your gut for the next 12 months? Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today you'll learn how even brief antibiotic use can permanently alter your microbiome. And I'm Alara Skye. We're examining new evidence showing that five days of a common antibiotic can seed resistance genes that linger for a year, reshaping how you digest food, balance immunity, and defend against infections. Let's ground the discussion in the scope of the challenge. In the United States alone, 2.8 million antibiotic-resistant infections strike each year, and 35,000 people die. You really feel the impact when you realize resistance begins inside you within days of starting treatment. Bacteria adapt through four main routes, intrinsic changes that evolve naturally, acquired mutations sparked by antibiotic pressure, shifts in protein production that hide targets from drugs, and direct DNA transfers between neighboring microbes, spreading resistance like wildfire. A pivotal nature study recruited 60 healthy adults and gave them 500 milligrams of ciprofloxacin twice daily for five days. Researchers collected stool samples over 20 weeks. What surprised those scientists most? They discovered that roughly 10% of the gut microbes mutated a gene called GYRA almost immediately. That single tweak disarmed ciprofloxacin, letting the newly resistant strains survive while susceptible bacteria were wiped out. Even more troubling, those altered bacteria paid no fitness penalty. They thrived as well as their unmutated cousins, so once they took over, nothing pushed them out. Modeling showed the mutants would stay dominant for a full year. That dominance doesn't just reduce numbers. It erodes diversity and pushes out keystone strains, organisms that maintain a stable network in your gut. When they vanish, your microbial ecosystem becomes fragile, less able to repel invaders or regulate inflammation. Scale the problem up, and national prescribing habits matter. Scientists compared 3,096 adults across 10 countries who weren't currently using antibiotics. People in Spain, Italy, and Greece, high prescription nations, carried up to five times more resistance genes than residents of Denmark or the Netherlands. Even if you never personally take a drug, those genes reach you through food, water, and everyday contact. Travel compounds the spread. Spend a week in a high-resistance nation, and your gut quickly adopts local resistance traits that hitch a ride home. Let's look at childhood exposure. In a long-term animal model, researchers administered ceftriaxone for eight days when subjects were four weeks old, a pediatric analog. Fourteen months later, their gut diversity still hadn't recovered. The microbial network lost complexity. Fewer species interacted, and crucial keystone strains failed to rebound. That fragmentation leaves your adult microbiome fragile and more likely to swing toward imbalance when stressed. Antibiotics also create selection pressure. When beneficial competitors disappear, resistant organisms face open territory and surge in number. They become a reservoir of resistance traits ready to pass into future pathogens entering your gut. So what practical steps can you take to shield your microbial allies? First, Reserve antibiotics for situations where benefits clearly outweigh long-term harm. Serious bacterial infections, surgical prophylaxis, and clearly diagnosed conditions that cannot self-resolve. Second, feed your gut daily with traditional fermented foods, homemade sauerkraut, kimchi, yogurt, kefir. Because you craft them with organic ingredients and allow wild cultures to flourish, you reseed a broad spectrum of beneficial organisms. Third, slash your linoleic acid intake. Vegetable oils, many nuts, and most ultra-processed snacks are packed with this omega-6 fat. High LA weakens your gut lining and fuels inflammation. Swap to tallow, grass-fed butter, coconut oil, or ghee. Fourth, nourish keystone strains such as acromangia by adding daily prebiotics. Apples with their skins, onions and soups, and roasted asparagus. These fibers provide food, your beneficial microbes ferment into compounds that strengthen your gut barrier. Fifth, before turning to synthetic antibiotics for minor issues, consider natural antimicrobials. Medicinal honey can suppress a broad range of bacteria. Raw garlic releases allicin, which pierces microbial membranes. 
fresh ginger and thyme essential oil, each show activity against stubborn pathogens. You may wonder whether those natural options risk breeding resistance too. The article indicates they exert multiple simultaneous stresses on bacteria, making adaptation far less likely than with single-target pharmaceuticals. That multi-pronged pressure means microbes can't tweak one gene to survive. Instead of fostering resistance, you reduce bacterial load without decimating your entire ecosystem, giving beneficial strains room to regroup. Let's connect these strategies back to daily life. Suppose you catch a cold. Viruses don't respond to antibiotics, so resting, hydrating, and supporting immunity avoids unnecessary prescriptions. If symptoms escalate to a clearly bacterial infection, then targeted therapy is warranted. If your physician deems antibiotics essential, ask about the narrowest effective spectrum and shortest course. Then immediately reinforce your microbiome with fermented foods and fibers once treatment ends. That helps reestablish diversity before resistant strains cement their dominance. Country-level policy matters too. Supporting guidelines that reduce agricultural and medical overprescription benefits everyone. When community resistance levels drop, you're less likely to encounter hard-to-treat infections, even if you do everything right personally. Let's address a common question. Can a probiotic supplement replace fermented foods? The article doesn't list specific supplements, so stick with whole food ferments that carry hundreds of strains rather than the handful found in capsules. Another frequent concern is whether travel inevitably spikes your resistance load. You can limit risk by eating locally fermented foods rich in competitive microbes, staying hydrated with clean water, and avoiding unnecessary medications abroad. Parents often ask about pediatric ear infections. Many resolve without drugs. Discuss watchful waiting with your healthcare provider. If antibiotics become necessary, follow up with child-friendly ferments like homemade yogurt once the course ends. Athletes sometimes worry that swapping vegetable oils will hurt endurance. Evidence suggests the opposite. Reducing linoleic acid lowers systemic inflammation, helping you recover faster and maintain stable energy across workouts. For older adults, restoring acromantia can improve metabolic markers. Cooking onions into soups, adding apple slices to salads, and spooning sauerkraut alongside meals are simple steps that fit any diet style. Summing up, antibiotic resistance isn't an abstract hospital problem. It's unfolding in your gut every time you swallow a pill. Yet you hold powerful tools, prudent drug use, daily ferments, fibrous prebiotics, healthy fats, and natural antimicrobials. Your challenge this week is straightforward. At one meal each day, eliminate vegetable oil, include a serving of fermented vegetables, and add a fiber-rich plant like asparagus or a whole apple. Notice changes in digestion, mood, or energy, and track them. Small, consistent actions safeguard your microbiome and, by extension, your overall vitality. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.